Now, earlier we were talking about maths, and I just want you to ponder this, uh, well, rather complicated equation behind me, covers the, all the screens here. What do you think that means? It was produced by the University of Salford here in Britain. It's actually a formula they've come up with for weighing up the various factors involved in match fixing in sport. Cricket, snooker, football, they're all among the sports where the illegal activity is known to take place. And today, the International Centre for Sport Security has released what it calls the astonishing findings of a large-scale study into illegal sport betting. Let's just have a look at some of those findings. $140 billion was laundered every year through sport betting, it found. The researchers also discovered a whopping 80% of sport betting was via illegal transactions. Asia and Europe represented 85% of the market in terms of legal and illegal sports betting. And hundreds or even thousands of cases are suspected to have taken place in 2013. Not a great picture, is it? Stuart Page from the International Centre for Sports Security contributed to that report and joins me from Paris now. Uh, Stuart, the, the figures are extraordinary. Some would say they're much bigger than that even. Oh, well, thank you, David, for uh, allowing us to talk tonight uh, from the International Centre for Sports Security. Yes, those figures uh, that have come out have been extrapolated by some of the best economists uh, around today. Um, and the figures that you see are only the tip of the iceberg, and that's only what we can get to. As you mentioned earlier, the 140 billion uh, euros that is lost in money laundering around the world. And we're only beginning today, after a two-year research with, with, between the ICSS and the Sabon University, to actually discover what we think is the beginning of something that's even larger out there that's happening today, which threatens sport globally. Right, and when, you're, and when we're talking about illegal betting it, it, and, and um, cheating effectively in sport, is this about licensed betting operators versus unlicensed, or is this the plain good old-fashioned, if I can put it that way, cheating, fixing odds, fixing results? That's a good question, David, because it is both two parts. One is there is those legitimate and the industry for gambling and have online sports betting that does exist. But they may not know that the game has actually been fixed and therefore they are losing out. Then there's those who have the illegal online off the street, we would say, gambling, in which they then are actually stacking the odds for the game. So it can affect two parts to the equation. And so it is quite a complex pr uh, problem that we have around the world. And, and lucky today, we are able and to have seen what, through this report, how big what I would call is the size of the sport integrity battlefield out there and an astonishing part of it. Right. Well, let me ask you this then, because we often get, we get isolated examples, don't we, illustrations of people who've been found to have been cheating or who've come forward and confess and what have you. But when you're talking these sorts of numbers, presumably it's organized crime up, up near the highest level, isn't it, that must be involved with this mafia of, of considerable strength and, and firepower. Absolutely, David. It is a transnational organized crime. Um, it's astonishing, as you we know through the report, how billions of euros, even 300 to 500 millions laid on this. And, and it actually has been around for quite a while, but unfortunately because the, the, the problem is so complex in that it, it's about the sporting clubs, it's about sponsors that support those, it's about government and law enforcement, it's about taxation and legislation and, and that it has grown. Sorry, don't you, do you think government and law enforcement yeah. don't really take on board how big this is? Because, I mean, it's not often we hear of people being sent to prison for match fixing, is it? Yeah, actually, what, what we find is, I, I think govern, governments recognize it, but I think there's also a bit of paralysis around because Let's look at the typical match fixing. The bet for, let's say, 30 million euros could come out of Asia. It's then laundered through an online company that could sit in Europe where online gambling, and then it's actually, the match is then fixed in the United Kingdom. That is a complex problem and trying to get across transnational borders. That means governments have to talk to other governments. They have to be able to communicate to each other, be able to solve this problem. because. The match fixing 
and the supply chain can start in one continent with another country and go through many others, it is a difficult problem for Massive, governments to tackle. Massively complicated. Stuart, I'm sorry to cut in there. We're going to have to end it there.